sunrise each and every morning. So what's going on today? Well, the 100 amp hour guy just ticking off the charger. It was drawing maybe 600 odd milliamps and seems to be pretty fully charged. These two guys I took off low charge yesterday and I'm pretty happy to see that they're about 4.8 volts, both of them. And that's pretty nice. And I put these two big guys on flow charge 13.8 volts and they're drawing a fair amount of current but it has dropped steadily over the night. They were over half an amp when I went to bed. And uh, I think I'm going to take the lower one, or the one using less current, which is this one, and put it on load test now, and let it run over the day, and we'll see what kind of capacity we get out of them. I'm pretty curious, I actually have no idea what to expect, because they do float pretty well. I mean, 370 milliamps at 13.8 volts, it's quite respectable for a, a battery this big. So, let's not waste any more time then. If we look down into the cells now, I'm pretty happy to report that we can't really see much sulfation left at all. Thank you for fixing properly, stupid camera. But, uh, essentially, when I got them home, there were a long rows of white stuff going along the plates, but there was just a little bit left at the top. So these batteries are sulfated still, but they do look a lot better than they did when I brought them home. So I'm not entirely sure what that means in practice, but it's a good thing, it, nonetheless, some of the sulfate's gone. And I just took this one off the float charger and the voltage is dropping as you'd expect, but it's not dropping below 13 right away or anything, so that's pretty promising. I've hooked up a load and I have plugged in the AC adapter, so we'll see what happens. Definitely not dropping as fast as those two, so that's a good thing. Oh, and I have to start the terrible timer. There we go. I can't stand touch screen devices. But you may do. I wonder when this is going to stabilise. Also, around 12.26 volts. It doesn't really seem to have a ground to be able to push the voltage back up. But it could just be a matter of waiting another 10 minutes or so. Well, I just went for a walk and that was maybe 45 minutes ago and when I get back, we've got this. So, let's stop this. I didn't intend to put it that low. Whoopsie. Anyway, got to let this thing recover for a little while. Don't really like the look of that ball. Oh no, there we go. Going up, up, and away. <sighs> Gonna let it recover for a little while and note it in the checkbook. Charge it up. I guess we're not auto rotating. Charge it up and then do another run tomorrow or something like that and see if we get a bit more time out of it. We should, since Sulfate tends to just kind of drop off a place when you cycle them, so I'm hoping for that. 90 amp hours ain't too bad anyway. Oh, it's got as much capacity as that one. <laughs> oh well, they don't cost me much. So it's the next day, and this guy has been charging overnight for. I don't know, about 12 hours maybe, with both chargers maxing out at around 16, no 15 amps or so, and it's starting to get kind of full. Anyway, I'm about to head into town on a few errands and 
I think I'm going to be bold, but I just took this one off a float charger. It's been floated at 13.8 volts. And I'm just going to turn on a load test and hope that I'm back within the maybe 9 hours it'll take. If it's got any kind of similar capacity to this one. So, let's flick the switch. These things really do have a lot of surface charge since they're so, such big batteries. I was really impressed it took you over 10 minutes for the other one to properly stabilize at around 12 volts. And uh, they just drop very slowly, so that's a good thing for short bursts of load, I guess. Even though that won't be much of a thing in my application. Anyway, gonna let this thing run, gonna time it, and we'll see what happens. And it's now about two hours later, I'm back from town and thankfully it hasn't been entirely discharged yet. It's pretty much stabilised at around 11.9 volts. Slowly, slowly dropping. So, this is about the same as I saw out of this guy. The oh, allergies. But, uh, I did notice that this one would float at a, about twice the current of this one, so I'm suspecting that this one might have a bit less capacity, but we're going to see. And while it, that one's doing its thing, I'm going to do an equalization charge of this one. I've just hooked up my old lab power supply and my new lab power supply. Pushing it up right above 15 volts. So, gonna let it sit for maybe an hour or two. Maybe even a bit more. Since it's running at such a low current. Only 7 amps or so. 6 amps actually. And uh, we're gonna have to do another cycle of this one tomorrow, I think. Because, well, it takes 10 hours to do. And there's only so much time of the day. There we go, it's been equalising for maybe two hours, a bit more, so time to take it off. Charger one, charger two. And that voltage is going to keep on dropping for quite some time. The sky is still discharging 11.7 volts. Doing about as well as his buddy, so probably gonna end up at around 90 amps as well. Could be worse. Oh, I just stopped the timer and sadly I didn't catch it on camera, but I've been cleaning around here and when I got here I noticed the voltage was about 9 volts and if we turn the load back on you can see it's dropping pretty quickly down way too low so this battery is only at about 70 amp hours right now which is pretty pathetic we're talking about that size battery and that size capsule granted it doesn't cost me anything but I would hope to improve on that something I have noticed with these batteries is that there's a lot of crap in the cells. I don't know if we're going to see. No, this one's pretty clear. You can see the plates in there. Just fire card with sulfate. Now that it's discharged. But if we take a look at the other battery, which has been charging and bubbling its electrolyte around, we should be able to see all the crap in here. Yeah. It's just a brown slurry, doesn't matter how you look at it, it's just horrible and dirty. So, these batteries have lived the life of sitting underneath a truck their entire lives, so they've accumulated some crap, but it, it settles at the bottom of the cells when they're not being uh, boiled or well outgassed. So, 
it shouldn't be too much of a problem in itself but it looks nasty and it's not like I couldn't do without it but mm -hmm. we're gonna have to try and cycle this other one and see if the equalization charge in the cycle made it any better and in the meantime I'm gonna recharge and equalize this one and if we look at the open circuit voltage it's already back to almost 11.8 volts so this battery isn't really too deeply discharged it's just got a very high internal resistance perhaps due to sulfate so with a bit of luck maybe another cycle good equalization charge could do it some good maybe get it back up to at least 80 amperes or oh, it's just going to drop back <laughs> drop further down and we'll get 50 out of it and then I'll probably just run it to the recycling facility because it floated at 400 milliamps so it really would if that can't be improved it would be using a bit too much energy just to keep itself topped up so we'll see let's hope it doesn't have to come to that it's going to be a fun experiment at least to see if we can actually do something about this battery Another morning. So what's going on? This guy has been float charging at 13.8 volts or thereabouts. 13.77. And it's dropped down pretty good in current. We're at maybe 200 milliamps. So I'm gonna call this one fully charged and uh, do another cyclone and see if we can improve on the 90 amp hours we got out of it last time. And as for the less fortunate battery, it's been charging on the 7 amp chargers, well just one of them overnight, and it's down to just over 2 amps. And for a 220 amp hour rated battery, that's a pretty good full charge. So I'm going to drop that one down to float charging and maybe do a cycle on it tomorrow. Well, no, actually, I'm going to equalize this one today. That's what I'm going to do. So, time to just hook up my load and see what happens. Well, before we start the actual test, let's just disconnect the charger and see how quickly the voltage drops. not very quickly. It's always a good sign if it likes to stick around the float voltage for a little while because that means it's not dissipating its surface charge extremely quickly. If it just dropped down to 13 volts right away it could be a sign of a higher self-discharge rate and well I know these batteries have a pretty high self-discharge rate but It doesn't seem to be absolutely awful, so let's just get this thing running. And now let's see what happens when we actually put some load on it. That's looking pretty good. Now it's probably just a placebo, but I'm thinking this isn't dropping quite as fast as it did last time. So. Let's just stop the timer and let it run. And yeah, this one's definitely doing a lot better for itself than last time. It's just been seven minutes and the voltage is already starting to stabilize quite well, dropping far less than one millivolt per second. And uh, it's it's stabilizing it. Oh, I can't remember what it was last time. Was it maybe twelve point? 1 or 12.2 and now it's at almost 12.4 so that makes me happy it puts a big wide smile on my face just have to hope that it can be seen of a capacity and now we're equalizing listen to that noise
told you, look at that, we've got 90 amp hours with plenty of room to spare. So, this is what's interesting, I wasn't entirely sure the, whether or not I'd get more capacity out of this battery, but it's pretty clear that I have, so there is just a question of how much, and well, 11.223 volts is a fair amount of voltage for one of these batteries, so maybe it can even push past 100. Hmm, that would be pretty nice. So I've just got to keep a close eye on it now, and with a bit of luck, not from this one down to 9 volts. And there we go. Quoting the test, the 100 amp hours flat. That's a 10 amp hour increase from our last try with this battery, and I am very happily surprised. Just gonna let it stabilize, put it into the spreadsheet, and so forth, and then maybe charge it up, and then just maybe do another run with it after equalizing it again. Hmm. It would be interesting to see if it just takes one cycle to if one cycle is all the headroom we have on these batteries or if two cycles will improve them mm hmm either way I'm pretty happy with this I better stop that there we go feels good to turn to the first 100 amp hour battery into this thing wonder how many more they're going to be. Makes me curious to cycle the 180 amp hour ones a bit more. And now it's time to charge it right back up. Big boy is hungry. Cycle number two. Data point, half an hour in, we've stabilised at 12.16 volts. OK, right around this time with the last cycle I took a bit of video of this battery and by then it was at 11.93 volts. So, we're definitely seeing an improvement in this guy from simply cycling it once and uh, doing some uh, balancing on it. I've also topped up the water just a bit more. So, very nice, very nice. It definitely seems that uh, simply doing some basic maintenance, soil balancing and cycling can do your batteries a lot of good. And would you look at that? We're 70 amp hours in and we are starting to approach the knee of a discharge curve, but we are still not even close to 11 volts, so this battery is going to run for quite a long while, probably at least another hour. I am almost certain it's going to do two more hours, so that's quite a step up from 70, 67 or so amp hours. Looking good. And I just stopped it at uh, right over 85 amp hours it had uh, I checked it maybe 10 minutes ago and it was at 10.8 uh, and it had dropped straight down to 9 volts just during that time so this one of these cells is weaker than the others and just dropped us a stone while the other ones were still getting strong so, <coughs> I'm going to have to do another equalization charge on it tomorrow and uh, cycle it again and see. 85 watt hours, oh, amp hours is definitely an improvement over 67. So, I'm not complaining, and since, since the cells seem to be unbalanced, there's a fair chance we might get even more out of it. So, uh, number one has been charging overnight. It's down to about 2 amps, and I just had a look in the cells, and 
rather than on both of the batteries for sulfate that you could see at the top of the salts are starting to just come off and disappear although you can pretty much just see the grey positive plates there instead of the horrible whitish goop and crust that was on there when I got them so I think these two are starting to shape up but I don't think I'm going to cycle this one anymore it's probably I bet it's at around 110 amp hours that's what I'd get if I were to cycle it again but it puts some necessary strain on it to do that but this guy on the other hand I'm going to do another short equalization charge to really top it off and hopefully chew away some of that last sulfate I can't show it to you because it's all grime in the cell since it's been charging but uh, I'm going to put it on the equalizer and do a cycle and we'll see what happens with a bit of luck it'll be up at 100 amperes as well I just do not get tired of the sound of an equalizing battery Okay, time to do the probably last cycle off of this number one battery. This is number two. It's number one. And let's just hope for the best. Just took it off a float charger, so it's got pretty high voltage. It was floating at around 350 milliamps or so, which is the lowest I've seen it float yet. It's always been over 400 or at 400. So, Let's shoot for 100 amp hours. And after 20 minutes, we've stabilized at almost 12.3 volts. This is looking pretty good. I think this battery was way lower the last cycle than closer to 12.25 or 2.0 even. And 8.5 hours in, and we've pretty much reached the end of the line. So, doesn't seem like this guy's gonna do much more than. 85, 86 amperes or thereabouts. So I'm going to cut this short before I over discharge it again. No point in doing that, and I'll put it in my little book and be happy about it. I was hoping that I'd get more capacity out of it. It's kind of unnecessarily big for an 85 ampere battery, but It's free. <laughs> I'm not going to complain. It's going to do a good job either way. And uh, maybe a day after I shot that piece of video, I had to pretty much leave the country on a family emergency deal. So my beloved batteries have just been sitting on the float charger now for almost a month. Well, a few weeks. And uh, I've built a small harness for them. I bought uh, some 16 square millimeter cable while I was abroad and a heap of cheap battery clamps. So they're all parallel together, nice and tight. And uh, they've been floating right now at about 340 milliamps and 13.3 volts and they've been doing quite alright and uh, I'm pretty much happy with the state of these batteries right now might do a cycle here or there just for fun but uh, I'm going to move on and try to focus more on getting my solar panels two of the f set of three which are here I just uh, waterproof them earlier today and also I'm going to begin putting a bit more effort into the soon-to-be battery 
battery room here, which is just our old oil room, which really has no use. It's quite moist in here usually, but it's cool, so it should be pretty good for a battery room. I'm going to put the solar regulator somewhere on the wall and there's some nice ventilation there and there leading right to the outside of the house so I'm probably going to put a small fan in those and that'll mark the end of <laughs> these batteries I'm probably going to make more battery videos in time because I'm going to keep on buying batteries for scrap price and see if I can do something with them because I've got quite a bit of room here for the batteries might be hard to see on camera but Here's my food for reference, so I can probably put, fit uh, two of my current banks beside each other right on that wall and uh, probably keep on building along e either of these walls or just zigzag the chain across the entire floor if I want to. I'm the only person who ever goes into this room anyway. So, yeah. Thank you for watching and I suppose that's a video about reconditioning batteries. We got these from what, 70 odd amp hours up to 186 for that one. So that's not too bad for free batteries. And in not too long I'm going to build the final battery for, not battery, the panel for that array and actually put them into use. And it's going to be interesting to see what kind of performance I get out of them and above all how, how well they'll perform in the long run. I'm also probably gonna use a few of these batteries uh, in the solar battery bank. I'm not entirely sure which. Uh, this one, which probably is a calcium battery, likes to have a bit more voltage than uh, the big ones and this one's my small 50 or 60 amp hour general purpose testing battery but uh, this one uh, came from my dad's old car and I brought it home uh, before I left uh, on the trip and I haven't done any performance checking on it it could be in decent shape so it could be a good candidate to just uh, add a bit of extra capacity I've got enough cabling to go around but uh, these are problems for the future. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry for the long delay between these videos and uh, for them being probably a bit messy in the editing. I'm a noob at that kind of stuff. But uh, I hope I'll improve. Cheerio.